librarian. I've worked in libraries since before Google existed. I've seen a lot of things change, but I've seen a lot of stuff stay the same. These days, I primarily teach library staff how to library, among other skills. Now, I had a colleague who had a webinar on how to say no in the workplace. Great topic, very much needed, but nobody was registering. When he investigated, he found that one manager said they would fire anyone who told them no. I wish I could say that this was surprising. Unfortunately, it's a huge red flag, and I'm gonna tell you why. But first, I wanna talk about creativity. I'm fascinated by the study of creativity in the workplace. Creativity is rated one of the top skills that organizations around the world look for in prospective employees. It's often misunderstood. Creativity is more than painting a pretty picture or crafting a catchy slogan. Creativity is anything that is unique and useful. It's that secret sauce that drives innovation, problem solving, and ultimately success. In a world that's constantly evolving, creativity is our compass. It helps drive us away from the way things were done in the past and steer us on the road towards the future. It can often be hard to see it in action. By the time something reaches the library sciences realm, it's already made the rounds of business and education fields. Why is that? Librarians love questions. We love knowledge. Why are staff so resistant to creativity? So I wanted to find out just that. Prior to the pandemic, I did a study with the Maryland Public Libraries to find out why staff were resistant to implementing cre creativity in the libraries. Now you may be thinking that it has to do with budgets, but that's not always the case. What I found was not quite what I expected. So how do we measure something as intangible as creativity? Goran Ekfall, a pioneering researcher in the field of organizational psychology, introduced something called the creative climate in the workplace. The creative climate is made up of 10 dimensions. Nine correlate positively, one correlates negatively, which means on assessments you wanna score low in that area. This can be further broken down into two areas, work atmosphere and attitude to work. The creative climate is one where the environment is conducive for staff taking on challenges independently. There's freedom and time to pursue their creative ideas. The environment is conducive to experimentation. There's support for creative thinking. There's this element of trust and openness, humor and playfulness, energy and liveliness an environment that allows for open debates and criticism is handled concisely. Overall, these 10 dimensions make up the creative climate and a positive creative climate is crucial for the success of teams and organizations when it comes to creativity. This sounded exactly what I wanted to look at. So using the situational outlook questionnaire from the Creative Problem Solving Board, I assessed the creative climate in the Maryland libraries. The SOQ uses over 55 years worth of research and statistical data, all in the area of creative climate and the research identified by ECBAL. Three main areas of concern stood out from the study. Organizational culture perceptions, change management practices, and individual stakeholder experience. When graphing the data, I found that when comparing Maryland represented here in orange, to the Innovative Control Group, represented here in red, Maryland scored positively in all areas except for two, risk-taking and freedom. Now, while Maryland scored positively in all areas when compared to the Stagnative Control Group, represented here in the blue, it was still slightly below the Innovative Control Group when it came, came to the area of risk-taking. 
Delving into the data found that even if policies and procedures were in place, staff were afraid to pursue their creative ideas. They felt they didn't have full permission. We had a perception problem. At the time, I didn't have a name for what I was looking at. And then I came across the research from Harvard's Amy Edmondson. What we had was a lack of psychological safety. Familiar with it? Psychological safety is this feeling in the workplace that it's open to conversations, freedom to make mistakes, to learn from it. In other words, people can be themselves at work. Going back to my colleague who had the webinar on saying no, an organization that has psychological safety, it's okay to tell the boss no. When staff feel they have a voice, it fosters a sense of safety. This all goes back to Maslow and the hierarchy of needs. The hierarchy of needs is like the original self-help pyramid. At the bottom, we have basic needs like food and shelter. Psychological safety happens in the middle, that sweet spot where belonging takes place. But creativity, that's all the way at the top in the realm of self-actualization. Without psychological safety, we can never reach the creative peak and creativity takes a nosedive. We can better understand this using the acronym CREATE. When there's a lack of psychological safety, we have communication resistance. Staff are afraid to speak up. They're afraid to voice their opinion. They're afraid to say no. Risk aversion. They're, when there's no safety net, they stick to the safe and the boring. Expression, suppression. Creativity needs freedom of expression. Without psychological safety, unique ideas find themselves squashed. Autonomy, deterioration. Insecurity leads to control issues. Leaders micromanage freedom evaporates, and creativity finds itself trapped in a tight box. Trust erosion. Trust is the glue of safety. Without it, creative collaboration fails to bloom, and distrust becomes a creativity killing machine. Emotional exhaustion. Creativity needs happy vibes. When there's no psychological safety, Stress and exhaustion skyrocket and creativity falls. Now, this may sound very negative, but there's a flip side to the model. When we do have psychological safety, we have open communication. We want to create channels of open communication where staff are free to share their ideas free of judgment. Risk taking, high five those who take calculated risks. Creativity thrives on the unknown. You wanna create a culture where mistakes are accepted and part of the norm. Show that it's okay to misstep sometimes. Expression, create avenues where staff can ask questions, share feedback, and show diverse opinions. You want to create channels where it's a learning experience and everybody learns from one another. Autonomy. Autonomy, staff need to, learn, need to own their work. Leaders need to provide structure but minimal interference. In other words, stop micromanaging. Trust. Trust is your foundation. Build it and watch creative collaboration bloom. You want to engage in activities that foster team building and collaboration. The goal is to strengthen the bonds within the team. Emotional well-being. Creative minds equal happy minds. When there's psychological safety, there is an element of well-being. People need to know that there is somebody that cares about them. Create check-ins about 
not just the work, but how, about how people, people are feeling. When someone knows that someone cares about them, it fosters a sense of safety. Ultimately, it all comes down to leaders. When leaders show that it's okay to be vulnerable, to be open, to take chances, they're setting the pace for the whole team. Here's an example. When the pandemic happened, we saw a surge of creativity happening in the public libraries. There was so much ambiguity around what was happening. One day was so different from one day to the next that we can no longer rely on tradition, past practices, or even status quo. Time was of the essence, and leaders had to trust individuals and teams to get the job done. It was very much like seeing, like throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what would stick. Staff had to begin trialing new ideas and workflows to see what would work. It was very much a try this and see approach. What we were seeing was psychological safety happening. We saw things like 3D printers, printing personal protective equipment, story times and other programming when virtual. Delivery services were experimented with, Kits were curated around reading interests and hobbies. We saw hybrid approaches to work with flexible scheduling and implementation of new technology. Overall, leaders set that tone by admitting that they didn't have all the answers. They were creating a culture where ideas could be shared free of judgment. We were seeing psychological safety. They say that every change is an opportunity. And that was certainly true for organizations all across the globe. Psychological safety is about feeling safe, feeling secure. Again, it all goes back to Maslow and the hierarchy of needs. People need to know that their needs are being met, physically, emotionally. In the face of such unprecedented circumstances, an emphasis on mental health became important for many organizations. Organizations took steps to ensure the well-being of their teams. The libraries united not just to support each other, but also to support their communities, expanding broadband access, distributing COVID testing kits, organizing community partnerships, creating safe spaces, and so much more. What we were seeing was that positive side of the CREATE model in action. By embracing communication, risk-taking, expression, autonomy, trust, and emotional well-being, a foundation was being laid for a culture of innovation. Psychological safety was crucial on that journey towards creativity. CREATE is more than just an acronym. It's a roadmap on the way to build creativity. I challenge everyone to embrace creativity, create a culture where it thrives, where people can share their own unique spark on that journey to drive us forward. Together, let's create. Thank you.